this is Chelsea Alexander with Rolling Out. We're here at the Black Girl Digital Awards, and we are here with Dr. Tell us really cool. Dr. John Lipman. I'm the founder and medical director of the Atlanta Fibroid Center here in Atlanta. Wow, wow. So yes, we have to talk about this because this is something that definitely affects all women, but you know, specifically black women. Is, I think you said something about uh, there's only one surgical treatment. Tell us well, about there's that. A lot of times women that are suffering with fibroids go to their gynecologist and they only hear about the surgical options, either myomectomy or hysterectomy. And we do a procedure that's completely non-surgical and outpatient. We've been doing it for over 25 years at the Atlanta Fibroid Center, but you'll never hear about it because the gynecologists are surgeons and they want to operate. And so we're trying to get the word out that no matter what the gynecologist says, you don't ha have to have hysterectomy. It's an option, but it should be the option of last resort because UFE, the option we do, is outpatient, non-surgical. You go home literally with a Band-Aid at the top of your leg. You get to keep all your parts and even have children after. Wow. Okay, so how does that process work? Can you, I know you can't probably tell us everything. Well, we, go, we basically access under, under x-ray, we, we steer a little tiny catheter, like a piece of spaghetti, okay. into each of the uterine arteries one at a time. And each of them branch like a tree getting smaller and smaller branches. The fibroids are the leaves of the tree, and I know what size those small peripheral branches are, and I can plug them up. Without a blood supply, all the fibroids die. The uterus stays alive, because the big trunk and the main branches stay open, but all the fibroids die, and as they die, they soften and shrink, and as that occurs, the woman's symptoms go away. Wow. Okay, so, okay. so it's completely outpatient. You go home the same day with a Band-Aid, you say you can even have children, but unfortunately, you got to know about it. So UFE right. has been around a long time, but we could be helping so many more women because a lot of women, in fact, it's estimated over a million women in the United States right now are sitting on the sidelines. They don't want surgery, and I don't blame them. I wouldn't want surgery either. So they suffer with it, the horrific, heavy bleeding every month. It's physically draining because they're often anemic. They have low iron and hemoglobin but it's also mentally draining. The mental aspect of this is significant. So they just dread this monthly horror show only for the next month to happen again. And so month after month, they just kind of put up with it. And unfortunately, a lot of women wave the white flag and they say, okay, you win. Because the average age is less than 40 for hysterectomy. And it's the second most common surgery done in the United States, yet half the population doesn't even have a uterus and it's unnecessary. So that's why we want, we are out there trying through the digital media and otherwise trying to get the word out. You've got other options and that's great because information is power and the only way to make an informed decision is to know all your options, not just the surgical ones. I love that so much. Well, is there, is there like a time limit? Like it, can you be too late to catch this or how is it? As long, if you're suffering with fibroid symptoms, you can get UFE. And you really need to get an opinion from an interventional radiologist like myself, okay. not a gynecologist, because you'll get told all sorts of disinformation. Oh, you're going to have a hysterectomy anyway, that's false. Or your fibroids are too big, false, too many. There's all sorts of silliness that I hear. In fact, I commonly will hear women are told once they're done having their kids, they don't need their uterus anymore. It's just get a hysterectomy, be done with it. Your uterus is important to you as a woman, even if you're not interested in children. Well, tell us more about that. Like, well, <laughs> I guess that was a word, but yeah, tell well, us, we'll add to that. I mean, when a woman loses her uterus, it can change her. If you've talked to anybody that's had a hysterectomy, the family knows um, they're not the same woman. It might affect them psychologically, like a man being castrated. It affects them sexually, loss of libido, loss of orgasm. These are young women, average age 39. A lot of bone loss, urinary leaking. Next time you're in Kroger or Publix, Go to the adult diaper aisle and see who's on the package. Okay. Who you should see, in my opinion, is an old man or an old woman. You won't. You'll see an attractive, young, African-American woman like yourself because, again, the average age is 39. That's the target audience. We want to target young black women that have had hysterectomies because those are the ones wearing the diapers. In fact, I have an ad in my office, a Depends ad. It's a very attractive 35, 40-ish-year-old black woman scooching on her skinny jeans over her adult diaper and it's got some cute slogan like they'll never know your secret some it's like what i want to know why that woman needs a diaper answer me that question right they're asking the wrong question right exactly well why are events like this needed to you 
you know, spread more or spread more information about our health. You've got to unfortunately take your own, you know, be your own advocate. And we tell this to patients all the time because a lot of women will go to their doctor that have the symptoms of fibroids and they'll be ignored. Their bleeding is heavily, they're bleeding heavily, crime scene like periods. And the doctor will say, well, we measured your hemoglobin and it's, it's you know, a little bit low, but it's not anything we want to treat. If, if your period is too heavy, it doesn't matter what your hemoglobin is, it's abnormal and should be treated. And so if you feel like you're being ignored or dismissed, find another doctor. There are lots of good doctors. I'm, I'm in Atlanta, that's, there's lots of good doctors here. You, no one should feel like they're not being listened to or ignored or dismissed. I did want to ask one bonus question. What about options as far as like insurance goes or? Yeah, know? this procedure is covered by all insurances. We take everything, including Medicare and Medicaid. Okay. A lot of specialists don't, we do. But insurance, the bigger problem is for women that don't have any insurance. Right, right, right. But if you have insurance, it's covered. Okay. But if it's not, do they have any other options? Well, there are, I mean, there are certain hospitals that, I mean, they're supposed to provide indigent care. They get, they get reimbursed for indigent care. Yeah. And so hospitals, um, patients sometimes have to go into the emergency room um, and get treated by a hospital because they can provide, because they get paid for indigent yeah. care. But, okay. but it's best to get oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> insurance. It's insurance yeah. if they can. I, we realize it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. uh, I see it on both ends. I'm an employer and, you know, have insurance myself. So I, I see it both. It's, it's increasingly difficult. Well, thank you so much for talking to Rolling Out and informing us once again. And we can't wait to get your story out there. I appreciate your help because we need all the voices possible to let people know they have options. And if they choose the surgical option, if they know about UFE, that's fine. But unfortunately, most women only get one option and they're suffering and that's what they choose. But they would never choose it otherwise. Well, thank you so much.